What's up you guys and welcome back to the Prime Vanguard channel. My name is Cassius, I'm the host and creator of the Prime Vanguard channel and today I have a very special deck profile going on today. I will be introducing my very first V Premium Shadow Paladin deck profile and I think that she deserves a bit more spotlight just based off the amount of hate that she's gotten. In case you guys haven't figured out what card I'm talking about, I'm talking about today's deck profile and the star of the deck profile and her name is Mesmerizing Witch Fianna. Do not say this card was good. Do not say this card was bad. I don't say that this card was great by any means, but I will say that this is by far even harder than my Dontarian deck profile, which is a deck that I spent months on like perfecting. But this deck has to be one of the like hardest decks I've ever had to build for. I've seen builds online, and I'm gonna be honest here, all those other builds online, like I play tested them out just because I literally didn't know where to start with this deck. And they're all okay. I'm not saying that my deck is any better, and it's simply not, it's not like the deck builder's fault. It's more of like Fianna's, the way Fianna's card design is. So that's what makes it so hard to build around her for. And that was just my biggest struggle to get past. But I played her for about a few weeks. I played her for about like since the deck came out and then I saw some videos online. So ever since the deck came out, I bought it because it was cheap at the time. And then I played the deck when it came out and I've just play tested a few builds and this is the one that I finally settled on. I think it's pretty decent. I mean, it's as decent as Fianna can get, but I really wanted to give her a chance. So without further ado, you guys, here is my Mesmerizing Witch Fianna deck profile for 2021, March. Let's get started. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get started off with the deck profile by showcasing to you four copies of Mesmerizing Witch Fianna. Now, Mesmerizing Witch Fianna, this is my very first Shadow Paladin deck and my first time ever featuring this card on my channel. So if you guys do not know what she does, she has two of the following effects. Her first one is Act, Counterblast one once per turn. You may retire two of your rear guards, search your deck for up to one card called Witch of Reality Fom, call it to the rear guard circle, and until the end of this turn, the unit placed in that rear guard circle becomes a vanguard circle. Then, her continuous ability, which is during your turn, all of your vanguards get plus 5,000 power for each of your opponent's grade zero rear guards. Okay, so those are her effects. So being able to generate an additional vanguard circle means that you are going to get one additional drive check for the turn, meaning that you always have your turns off with three drive checks. And being able to retire two of your rear guards is very easy to do with Shadow Paladin, as we have no problem building a board with some of the other supporting units that we have in the deck. So this cost isn't a big one as well. The supporting grade two that goes with this card is actually extremely helpful. And since I already mentioned her, I'm just going to showcase her now. Because I'm playing four copies of Fianna, I am playing four copies of Rich of Reality Fom. If you guys don't know what her ability is, she has the effect which is act on the Vanguard Circle. Once per turn, you Soul Blast one. Your opponent chooses two grade zero unit cards from his or her drop zone and calls them to rear guard circles with grade one or greater units to them. If your opponent cannot make the call, you get plus one drive until the end of the turn. All right, so and this is the card that we're talking about, which of reality fum. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Fiona first before I hop right into her. Now, Fiona's ability means that we get to search our deck out or our hand and generate more board and get an additional Vanguard attack. And because we have additional Vanguard attack, that means that we're also gonna have an additional drive check for the turn. Meaning that you're always gonna have, being able to get this ability off, you're going to have three drive checks a turn, meaning we get extra hand, extra chances for resources to help out as well. The additional 5,000 power to your Vanguards means that the farm that you have in the rear guard We'll use her ability, which we'll get into later, and get an additional 5,000 power to your Vanguard and to herself, meaning that you can choose to play an offensive way or you can choose to play a resource way, depending on what your opponent has done and how it's going to affect their guarding. As something that's very important to realize about this deck, and I think that's a lot of people overlooked, is the fact that because you have to use grade zeros to defend since they're your highest shield value. Eventually your opponent is going to block with them. And Fianna, her play style is very really unorthodox to Shadow Paladin as this is more of a late game deck. Like this deck gets stronger as the game goes on versus in the early game, this deck does not too much. If I'm just telling the truth. In the early game, when you ride her first, 
or if you go first and you don't have the supporting engine that we play, you're gonna go into her, you're gonna get your farm, and then you're just gonna get three drive checks that turn. And that's when you first ride in her, and three drive checks is fine, but not being able to do anything else or not have any other offensive pressure or not being able to like generate anything other than extra drive checks is pretty mediocre in this era of V Vanguard right now. And with the support of the rest of clan selection and just how much of an upgrade some of the other decks got, three drive checks just, it's okay. It's like cookie cutter uh, if you just wanna give a deck something that is okay. But where they really shine is in the late game. And this deck gets really powerful in the late game as your opponent will have had to have guard with a grade zero. It's it, it's inevitable. Your opponent is gonna have to guard with a grade zero, whether it be the first attack with this, or whether it be early game, or whether they have to discard for something. A grade zero is going to hit the drop zone. And when that grade zero hits the drop zone, you have cards such as FOM, which we're about to get into, that will build your board back up. And then it's the idea behind this deck is that you use the early game to build up your resources, control your resource management, and then when you go into the late game, that's when it's like, okay, I'm gonna start hitting you with bigger attacks, I'm gonna start playing more aggressively, more offensively, let's see how you deal with this. And a lot of decks with the way that speed is in Vanguard just don't expect that or can't handle that. So I think that's something that was overlooked with this deck. And that is my approach to this deck, which is that, okay, if you wanna play uh, early game resource, game or if you want to play a stamina battle let's do that i have no problem you know building resources early in the game maintaining that and then late game i'm just gonna hit you with everything i got and i can keep doing that consistently every turn so there is no slowing down with this deck it's more of like a slow build up is how this deck really works for my next grade three i play one copy of phantom blaster dragon now i play the phantom blaster dragon engine which i'm about to showcase all right you guys so this is it this is the phantom blaster dragon superior ride engine and so everything here is just four cards you get to take out of your deck for free and get into this you get into that which helps you generate an extra force one marker which therefore will allow you to set up into your late game player into your win condition of the deck and that's really it it's your best grade three first turn ride that you've got i didn't want to play anything else because i just felt like none of the other cards were helpful to what it is that i want to do with fiana so therefore i feel like this engine is just the best route to go now i play two copies of danger lunge dragon so danger lunge dragon is actually the win condition of this deck he has the following effect which is on vanguard circle when placed you soul blast one and a great two unit card for your drop zone returns to your hand he then has the other ability which is on vanguard and rearguard circle when it attacks if you have three or more force markers in play you soul blast a grade three until the end of the battle this unit gets 10k plus one critical and your opponent cannot call sentinels from their hand this card essentially is dragonic waterfall on the rearguard circle and because we use the pbd engine to generate extra force markers we have no problem doing this Fianna herself is not a win condition card. Therefore, other than beating down your opponent, which is something we do not want to do, we are just not, we are without a win con. And that's where Danger Launch Dragon really stepped up to the plate because you have PBD, which gets you a force one marker, the ride engine. Then you have Fianna, which gets you a force one marker, which you're gonna place all of them on rear guard circle because you want your FOM attack to be relevant as you are gonna stack all the triggers onto that unit on the force marker. And then, you can go into Danger Lunge Dragon. And depending on how the game is going, there have been some games where I just stacked everything on the center, and then there have been some games where I just put everything on the rear guard circle, simply because when you go into Fianna and the Fawn Legion, you are getting three you are getting three drive checks minimum. And then you get four drive checks if your opponent has to put in grade zeros. But either way, the idea is that you use all the drive checks you've achieved on top of the force markers, put it onto Danger Lunge Dragon, and just kill your opponent. Oof. Moving on to my grade twos, I play four copies of Darkness Maiden Maka. Now, Darkness Maiden Maka has the following effect, which is act on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. Once per turn, you may counterblast one, call a grade one or less card from your hand to the Rearguard Circle. You draw a card, and this unit gets plus 5,000 power. Now, Maka is, I will just say this now, is an optional slot. I know a lot of people really like Leofall, but in my opinion, I prefer this card. And the reason why I prefer this card is because as I was stating earlier, 
This deck, unlike many other Shadow Paladin decks, does not generate a lot of power except for Fianna and Fom themselves. So the rest of your units are just all supporting this danger launch strategy. And Maka is just good consistently. She stays on the board, she gives you resources, she gives you power as well, which means that her attack will be relevant. And Leofall only gives you the resources depending on what you call, versus Maka, I can just continuously use her to build a board and my offense. That is why I've decided to play four of her. Again, you can substitute this card for Leofall if you want to, but it will change the chemistry of the deck. But Maka is good for now. On to my grade ones. I play two copies of Accomplishment Light Dilate. Dilate is a soul charging on place unit, which means that we have another way of generating soul, as this deck does use up soul a little bit, because Fom's ability costs you a soul blast, and your ride engine costs you a soul blast, so having this card to build back our soul charging is the purpose. I play two copies of Black Sage Sharon. Sharon, just soul blast, counter charge one is the main purpose of this card. Everyone knows that you combine this card with Maka and pretty much make up for the counter blast that you did. Or you can combine this card with Leofall to make up for the counter blast that you did. But having her to get a counter charge back when I need it is helpful. For my next grade one, I play three copies of Black Winged Swordbreaker. I'm playing three copies of Black Winged Swordbreaker, essentially for the same reason why I play Maka. She gives you a draw and she gives you power as well. And our counter blasting in this deck does not as expensive as I thought it was going to be. In essence, we use our soul more than we do our counter blast. So whenever I need soul for the ability of Fum or I just run out of dilates in the deck, I have Black Wing Swordbreaker who can still give me that plus one draw. And then because I combine her with Maka, she gets 5k power, making her a 10k booster, which is helpful. And then for my next grade one, I play four copies of Skull Witch Nemen. Skull Witch Nemen, without a doubt, is by far the best grade one that Shadow Paladin has. Her ability to rest herself and call a unit with 5k power is amazing. This card enables any of your other grade ones, the deck that you have, to come out and assist you. She builds a board for the cost of Fianna's ability. She allows you to get the ride engine off. This card has to be maxed out in the deck because it enables so many of your best plays that not playing for this card just doesn't make sense to me. You can even use herself to call out another one to set up for next turn and do shenanigans with that. But she did get changed to where I think you can only use this card once per turn. And then for my last grade one, I play four copies of Cold Blooded Witch Luba. Cold Blooded Witch Luba is another one of the grade one Shadow Powder units introduced in Festival Collection. And she has the following effect, which is this ability's cost is reduced by one counter blast for each of your opponent's grade zero rear guards. And then it has the following effect, which is when placed, you counter blast one, you put a grade two or greater normal unit from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck, and then you draw a card. This card is helpful as it helps you recycle some of your important grade two units and three units back into the deck, allowing you to draw a card and then getting them later. Four copies of her is, in my opinion, what I like to play. However, I can't understand why somebody might drop one to two of her down as this is a card that does not work that well in the early game unless the game is going in your favor but she is a late game card and that's the purpose of her to get your resources in the late game which only signifies the strategy that this deck really does pop off in the later game than it does the early game moving on to my triggers i play four copies of dark side trumpeter i play four copies of grim revenger i play four copies of dark shield mac Lear. Four copies of Abyss Healer. All right, you guys, so we're now at the point in the video where I talk about which marker I think is best for the deck to play. Now, if you guys haven't pretty much noticed already, I really do think that Force One is the solid way for this deck to go. And the reason for this thought process is that Fianna is a slow deck. It is a deck that explodes later in the game and Force Two, while it gives you the additional critical, this deck Power. This deck's power, unlike other Shadow Paladin decks, doesn't continuously, it doesn't explode at the beginning and then stays like that later. This deck takes its time to build up its resources and you manage your opponent's board and then you have to control your opponent's decisions and you have to do all these things to build up to this one th event that will lead to your victory. 
which is going into danger lunge. And then because we want our danger lunge to be our strongest attacker, having ten, three force one circles on his circle and then combining it with three drive checks and then assuming you get at least one trigger on that, stacking on there, then it's 10K on his own, you have now a 50K swinging unit with a booster and your opponent cannot use sentinels with that. And then the fact that Fianna and Fom, depending on where they're at in the game, will be uh, strong attackers too because Fianna gives 5k to herself and to Fom, and there's a lot of guarding that goes into that turn. Plus this deck plays 8 criticals already, which means that you do so much controlling with this deck because of your superior ride engine in the main and Fianna and Luba that you do see your, you do compress your deck a lot later in the game. And that's why I just don't feel as though Force 2 is helpful in that sense. Force 2 only ever comes up in two extremely, very rare circumstances. And those circumstances are if you have one piece of your ride engine in your hand and then you use PBD's effect and then you just ride in your Fianna and then you go and you have danger lunge as well. And then you can just apply so much pressure with that turn that Force 2 will just be the best route to go because at that point your opponent guard with zeros and then going to the turn after that Fianna just becomes a lot more threatening. Then there's the other circumstance which is just that your slow game has just been your slow game has just been really well and your opponents are at three damage and just going force two just puts on a lot of pressure. And then because you're building up force markers because of your ride engine, that means that two of your attacks, which will be Fianna and Fom, will just be additional critical, and then because they have drive checks on each one, that's when that becomes threatening. However, I just found Force 1 to be the best route to go because this deck is not fast like that, and depending on if you have the right engine, it may or may not work. So, Force 1, in my opinion, is the best route to go for this deck. If you have access to the right engine early and you've already got good advantage in your opponent before you go into Fianna, then I would say go Force 2. But in most of my games, I always find myself going Force 1 because early in this game, the deck lacks power and there are a lot of decks that are just faster than you, that can kill you faster. So having that power to put pressure on with them is just what this deck needed in my opinion. All right, you guys, so that is it for this deck profile. This is my very first Shadow Paladin deck profile and I was actually very excited. I really did want to give uh, Fianna a chance simply just because there's been so much hate on this card. It was very disappointing for a lot of Shadow Paladin players because her level of power compared to just what Shadow Paladin has had in the past with Luard setting the bar for Shadow Paladin standard very high. There's Mordred, Luard, there's the Phantom Blaster lineup, and now we have the Ride Inch Phantom Blaster. Like, Fianna just had, she came into this with just a lot going against her. And I really want to give this deck a chance. And I want to say that with the approach that I've taken to the deck, for me, it works. It's worked out very well for me. My opponents don't see it coming. And because there aren't too many builds for this deck, this deck does for now walk around with the element of surprise because your opponent isn't gonna understand what you're doing. If anything, they just see danger lunge and then they get the idea, but you can always mess with their heads and then you do have a form of control, which is interesting, of getting rid of their units on board and then calling out the zeros because that does mess with their power columns. But yeah, I really just wanted to try Fiona out and she was cheap too, so I was able to, I finally had an excuse to stop being lazy and build a Shadow Paladin deck to complete my V Premium collection. But that is it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, it really does help the channel. Also do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you guys get notified when I drop more deck profiles and discussions. Don't forget to comment on this video if there's any other like tips and tricks for this deck. I really want to know, I didn't really have anything to go off of other than just like continuously throwing random cards in here until I finally got what I thought was the best build after playing so many games with this deck. And also, if your friend's looking for a witch deck profile for Fianna, go ahead and share this video with them. I have not seen any witch deck profiles for V Premium for this, so if I'm the first one that you guys ever see, like, hey, please, please share, help me out. Um, yeah, that's it for this video. I will see you guys later. Peace.